today. From Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, this is Madden Football on EA Sports. We'll see Drake May and the New England Patriots taking on Tua Tungavailoa and the Miami Dolphins. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gauden. Now, Charles, you and I, we've done a lot of games together. It always seems like we're rehashing the same storylines. Turnovers, of course, always a big story. Quarterback play, running backs, yada, yada, yada. But getting ready for this one, one word kept coming to mind, and that's preparation. Well, it's critical to be prepared physically, mentally. When you think about getting ready for an NFL game, you have to wonder, what will they throw at us that maybe we haven't seen before? Two-minute drill? Maybe different things like that. Got to be prepared. You're exactly right. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So here come the Patriots to take over for the first time, led out by the rookie, the third overall pick back in April out of UNC, and that's Drake May. And it's been a long time, but this franchise entered the offseason desperately needing a young quarterback to build around and plan for the future. And they found their guy in Drake May out of North Carolina. Big arm, great mobility, terrific character. He's everything you're looking for in a quarterback. It may bring him along slowly, but I believe in time, he will be their QB1 and be there for a long time. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll run it. This is Ramondre Stevenson. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. Again, it's Stevenson. Dancing away at the... There he goes, right side. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. throw with May. A quick throw there is incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes what 9.9 .9 times out of 10 just missed that one. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine to throw. It's May. That one out wide and intercepted. Picked by Kendall Fuller, and he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. Well, short of them returning it for a pick six, that was about the worst start you could ask for in this one because your advantage of getting the ball first is gone, and they're set up a short distance from your end zone. Now you're counting on your defense to prevent a touchdown, and your offense, you better be ready to come out swinging on the next series. 
Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. They'll have very good starting field position here after the turnover as they search for the first points of the ball game. Now a man who tore up the Packers in the NFC title game a few years back. It's Raheem Mostert. So that run play nullified by the holding call on the tight end. Yeah, I just think he needs to get off the ball a lot quicker and get into the block a little bit more effectively. Then he doesn't have to reach and grab and try and hold on. Tua sets up to pass it. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Throwing now is Tungabailoa. Short throw to Smith. And coach is always hard on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, but when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Well, good field position to start the drive, but under the gun now here on third and eight. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Uh, that's a sharp throw right there on third down. They're looking to get the first points of the game, and they certainly don't want to be on a field goal. So that's a nice job to get the hook up and set up a first and goal. First and goal, a chance to convert that early turnover into points. Here's Mostert. And he's going to pull his way into the end zone for the Dolphins score. Raheem Mostert, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. They go I formation, fullback leads the way for the touchdown. Sort of a lost art, isn't it? It really is, but sometimes when you're able to bring it back and use it against other teams, they're not prepared for it. They haven't seen it in a while, and now you gain an advantage, and we just saw that advantage result in a touchdown. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. And that makes it 7 nothing, Dolphins. So that drive, four plays. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Raheem Mostert. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Oh, good looking return set up here. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. So back onto the field come the Pats for their second drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others, where they think they have an advantage. Dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Let's put that team on the 
They'll run with Stevenson to begin the drive. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. The interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they started the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. To the air, May. That's complete. Demario Douglas with it. Yeah, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. It's another first down. I'm going to be a gain of 21 yards. And that's how you shake off the interception he threw on the opening drive. Come back and throw another strike and gain nice yardage. And I give credit to two people on this one. The man throwing the ball and the person calling the plays. They're not shutting him down early in this game. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 30-yard line. Here's May. Open man, that's Henry. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Well, it certainly doesn't matter if it's been through the air like on this play or on the ground. I don't know what's going on with this defense. In a sense, they've been AWOL on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find the answers, and they've got to find them quick. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Straight ahead at Stevenson. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Look at a throw, May. There's Henry, touchdown Patriots. Hunter Henry from 13 yards out. And the Patriots are an extra point away from evening this one up. So on this drive, the rookie leads him into the end zone, Charles, and that helps cancel out the points that were created on the previous drive when he threw the interception. Yeah, let's give some credit to this rookie because instead of hanging his head after his mistake leads to a touchdown, he comes back out and he's firing and made up for it right there. A well-executed series helps reestablish some confidence in him to run this offense. The extra point by Sly is up and good, and we are tied at seven. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with a New England touchdown. Seven now as they kick it away. And Hill will opt for the touchback. So Miami coming out for their second drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. 
And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Here's Tungabailoa on first and 10. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Here's Mostert, toss left side. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. Give him a loss of six yards, and it brings up third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Now third down and seven. Here's Tua. Yeah, the pressure gets there, and Tua is going to be taken down. Jawan Bentley, they want to get in and finish off the play. And they brought the pressure there just right up the gut, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And you know, when you've got so many different responsibilities as an offensive line, you got to deal with the nose tackle, the two defensive tackles or ends, and then sometimes you just can't account for everyone. The linebacker slipped free. So on fourth down, here's Jake Bailey to punt for the Dolphins. And back deep for New England is Marcus Jones. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Patriots take over. New England with a first down as they begin the drive. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. These two teams all tied after one. Start of the second quarter from Foxborough. It's the homestanding Patriots with the football as they are looking at a second and five situation. the middle here's Stevenson and he's dropped just before the line to gain four yard pickup leaves him with third and one when you find that kind of yardage you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier and guess what you're gonna go back and tell your offensive coordinator I'd like to keep carrying it thank you the Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down they'll run with Gibson and a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. 14 yards is the pickup there on a New England first down. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. Just shy of the 30. Ten more there and another first down. 
Was that a design pass or what was that? It was built into the play call. He had the opportunity to either hand it inside, keep it himself to run it, or do what he just did. Throw that pass inside, hitting a receiver on the run. On first and 10, it's May. Pass complete once again to Bourne. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and that'll make it second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant, a lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Second down and three. Throwing here is May. Complete, it's Henry. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. And here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Again, he'll drop to throw. And this is caught. Touchdown, Patriots. A nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Patriots have taken the lead. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes... You throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Sly on for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drives seven plays in length. And it's finished off by a Pats touchdown. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. Hill is going to take it out of the end zone. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Now comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. That 7 nothing lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 26. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga Vailoa. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Now a second and ten. From the gun, it's Tua. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 
A good pick up there, 26 yards. Well, this is an awfully tough route to defend in man coverage because he lines up on the right and then runs a crossing route back to the other side of the field. So as a defender, you're not only trailing him the whole way, you're also looking out for your own guys to make sure you don't get yourself picked off. And then you can't catch up in time to prevent the completion. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. And again, it's Tug of Iloa. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. And it was a bit of a bounce-back season a year ago for John U. Smith when he set career highs in both catches and yards in his lone season in Atlanta. The Dolphins signed him this offseason in hopes that they see that continue. We've hit the two-minute mark of the second quarter, 14-7. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Tua setting up shop to throw again. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Second and ten. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. That's going to be caught by Waddle. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Again, they will throw it with Tonga Bailoa. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And that gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Two and now on first down. Over the middle to back him. And the Dolphins are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Now Tua toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. Another shot from the one on second and goal. Mostert will take this in for the Dolphin touchdown. This is our time. 
Well, they move the ball down the field through the air, Charles, and then finally they get the running game involved, and it works to perfection. Touchdown. And, partner, I kept waiting for that running game to come into play and actually saved it until the very end. Touchdown goes on his stat sheet, but you and I both know, and he knows as well, his teammates airing it out made this a successful drive. Sanders now to add the extra point. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So that one a long 11 play drive. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Raheem Moster. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. No run back here for Jones, a touchback. The Patriots with the football here late in this first half. And with a little under a minute to play, they may be looking to pick up some yardage here, maybe try and come up with a field goal to seize the lead before intermission. On first down, that's Bourne, got it on the slant. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Douglas, the man in motion. Second down, May. Now he's going to drop this one down to Gibson. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Throw on first down with May. Short pass caught by Henry. Just a gain of a couple there, and it'll be second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Now the Patriots moving quickly, hustling up to the line. They go play action now, May. And that's caught at the 25. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. down here's May throw right side going to be taken in by Henry and he'll go out of bounds inside the 15 yard line had the gain here to the previous play and it's better than 40 yards total fifth catch of the game for him there yeah and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher it used to be occasional right safety valve 
throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the left hash, you'll have to cut this at a tight angle. Sly able to put this one through, and that will do it for this first half. So we've hit halftime, just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Seventeen, fourteen is the score. Back underway here now in this third quarter. And no run back here as the third quarter will commence with a touchback. The Dolphins getting set to go back to work here in quarter number three. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. Third quarter starts with a run from Mostert. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. That one definitely helps as they try to push the ball down the field here, trailing early in the third quarter. And even though they're trailing, not abandoning the running game. People may call it an adjustment. I think it's just much more sticking to what works for you and continuing to have faith in it. And the running game is starting to pay off. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Two are going to throw. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Multiple players getting home there, and it's a loss of two on the sack. I thought there at the end he may have had a chance to release that, but that pocket closed a little too quickly, and down he went. Yeah, he was certainly trying to do everything he could to extend the life of the play, probably counting in his head. One, two, and then he ran out of time. Following the sack, they'll come up here on a second down and 12. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. Back-to-back two-yard losses, and that sets up a tough third and 14. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Couple of plays sent them the wrong way, and now they face a third and 14. Looking to pass, Tua. And this one complete to Smith. 
And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed. And on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. In motion, Hill. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. There to stop him, Jawan Bentley. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. Ball placed at the 45 for second and five. From the gun, a run with Moster. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. I have to think a major focus of the halftime meetings had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Short throw to Smith. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave them with a second and just a few inches left. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. He'll look to throw. A quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. Partner, for once in my life, I'll be succinct. In a one-possession game, every single stop like that could be a difference maker. Complete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Now they go with Mostert again. He's able to get six. A nice pickup down to the 21. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry. And they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. This second and four. Again, they'll run it with Mostert. And give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards of carry at the moment. Here's third and a few inches. Go, 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 
They run out of the shotgun with Moster. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Now they'll throw with Tagovailoa. Flushed out right. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. Tua Tagovailoa, a 12-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins have taken the lead here in the final seconds of the third quarter. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And they will not have time to get another play in here as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Kick this one away. No run back here for Jones. A touchback. And now out come the Patriots. The pressure is on now. They're being shut out here in the second half after a decent first half offensively. And they need their best drive of the game right here. First down. Checking this down to Stevenson. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. They'll set up a throw. Short pass caught by Henry. And Henry's going to pick up a Patriots first down as the tackle going to be made up at the 37. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Stevenson now on first and 10. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Second and six. From the shotgun, it's May. Short pass caught by Henry. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. They're going to empty the backfield here, so you know this ball's likely to come out quick. They let the four outside receivers run deeper routes and then let the tight end just make a beeline across the formation. He's able to make the catch and turn it into good yardage and a first down. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 47. A throw over the middle, taken in. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. But right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. From the 38 now, here's second down and one. Play action, May. 
And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. They'll try and run for the first with Stevenson. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. So first and 10 now from the 30. To throw, it's May. Over the middle, he gets it to Gibson. And he's down into the red zone at the 15 after a gain of 15. First and 10. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. They'll try the left side with Stevenson. Trying to turn the corner, but they string him out and stop him at the line of scrimmage. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire. Again from the 15, second and 10. They run once more with Stevenson. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Here's third down at five. Back to throw. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Ramsey. And the Dolphins have just about sewn up this football game. Those INTs all sting when you throw one in the red zone. I think especially as a rookie, maybe it stings a little bit more. I think what you're saying is they don't all count the same, do they? Mm -hmm. Right? Interceptions in the red zone that you've given up points now, those are precious. So you have to learn from those and in a hurry. Miami set to take over. And this game not quite over yet. And we'll likely see them take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down and make them use up all their timeouts in order to feel like they have this one in hand. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now he's loose again. And he gets this all the way down to the Patriots' 35-yard line. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Ready, 
Victory very likely now for the Dolphins as they take a knee here. The Patriots will take their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. And they will take a knee here. against the world and get it done, oh, how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. <laughs> second half Charles a little bit different from the first not only did we have the lead change after intermission but they were able to pitch the shutout in the second half and get an impressive victory and what's the old expression that's not quite how I saw it playing out in my head you know they didn't expect this at all as you mentioned went into the half with the lead losing the game is one thing getting shut out in the second half that's a surprise So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. And with that, we say so long from Foxborough.